Negging is a type of backhanded compliment. It's also a form of manipulation, and it's often the earliest red flag you'll encounter with a new person. Today, we're taking a deep dive into this manipulative tactic that's so popular in the pickup artist community and among narcissists. And yes, there's definitely some crossover. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Common Ego community, where we talk about all kinds of manipulation tactics. So if you like this video, you might want to consider subscribing. Today we're talking about a tactic that you all know very well, but you may not have had a name for it. The name is negging. And you could also call it a backhanded compliment, but it's a backhanded compliment that's specifically disguised as flirting. It's usually used as a conversation starter that at the same time takes a jab at the other person's confidence. And that may sound so off to some of you, like how is insulting someone considered flirting? Well, it follows the same misguided ideology as telling a little girl who's being bullied by a boy on the playground that he's flirting and deep down really likes her. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, but we probably shouldn't teach kids to associate abuse and affection together. Because both the girl and the boy may grow up thinking that things like negging and other manipulative tactics are a good idea. So is everyone who does it a raging narcissist? Well, no, but you can tell a lot about a person by how they communicate, especially early on. So someone may actually use the negging tactic for a variety of reasons, and I want to quickly touch on a few of them. First, someone may use negging to stand out. You know, everyone compliments an attractive person. Not everyone has the nerve to insult them. They may also do it as a show of confidence. Imagine how confident you must be to insult someone to their face. That was sarcasm. It's actually not really confident, it's just rude. And someone else may end up using negging simply because they're part of a pickup, pickup artist community and they, somebody told them to. Negging is a tactic that in pickup artist communities men are taught to use to pick up women. And they use it especially to pick up women who are more attractive than women that they would typically date. So this is why you'll find so much information about men using negging as a pickup strategy. But but here's a little secret. Women use it too. And I'm here to tell you that male or female negging is a red flag. Even if you've done it yourself, it's still a red flag. Negging is not synonymous with flirting. And I'm going to explain why negging is such a red flag in a moment. But first, I want to talk through the difference between flirting and negging with some examples. These are fictional examples, and we're going to get to some real examples in a little while. But right now I'm using fictional examples to show you the contrast between flirting and negging. Okay, so scenario one, Matthew and Sadie have gone on a couple of dates, and Sadie has this warm, amazing smile, and Matthew finds it irresistible, and he's not shy about letting her know. And in a playful manner, Matthew likes to tease her about it, saying things like, oh, I bet all you have to do is flash that smile and you can get whatever you want. Scenario two, Lisa and Steve have also been on a couple of dates, and Lisa also thinks Steve has an amazing smile. And in a playful manner, Lisa likes to tease Steve about it, saying something like, I look forward to seeing your smile every day. It really lights up a room. And somehow it even makes your nose look smaller when you smile. Like when you smile, your nose does not stand out at all. So which example was negging and which was flirting? You can tell by the way you would feel by getting each compliment. In the first example, you might get all the warm, fuzzy feels, right? And in the second example, you think, like, wait, what's wrong with my nose? And if Lisa and Steve from the second example continue dating, Steve will always remember that Lisa thinks he has a big nose and that she thinks it's a bad thing because that's how she framed her comment. The reason this is a red flag, just in case it isn't already obvious, is that it sets the stage for later emotional abuse. Does it mean that everyone who insults you in a bar is dangerous? Not necessarily, but it's enough of a red flag that you may want to consider it a deal breaker. So we've talked through some pretty obvious insults, and there was even strategy to the second one. In the example with Lisa and Steve, Lisa used a technique that involves two compliments and one insult. 
Another variation of that is a compliment sandwich, where a person will sandwich an insult between two compliments. The first compliment gets the attention of the other person in a good way, and it serves to disarm them. Then comes the insult, which will throw them off and shake their confidence. And then comes another compliment to leave the person with more positive feelings. But we all know that when someone insults you, it sticks. And if this is someone you allow into your life, you've already accepted an imbalance in the relationship dynamic. The other person has pointed out your flaws or otherwise insulted you. And you may think you wouldn't fall for this or find it attractive. I'd say it's probably more in the delivery than anything, but maybe even then obvious negging wouldn't work for you. And that's where subtle negging comes in. Subtle negging elevates the other person above you or other people. In this way, you could look at it as extreme arrogance, but again, sometimes it flies under the radar. Let's look at a few examples. Example one, I guess you could say my standards are unusually high. Like don't even talk to me unless you have a graduate degree and make seven figures. So even if you're sitting there with a lucrative career, multiple PhDs and professional certifications up the wazoo, or is it out the wazoo? These cliches sometimes escape me. Anyway, wazoo aside, this person is sending the message that you're among the chosen few who passed the test. They're essentially selling themselves as a rare commodity, and you should count yourself lucky to be in their presence. And they're also subtly letting you know that you only have value because of your accomplishments. You've passed this test, but rest assured that even though you passed this one with flying colors, there will be other tests you will not pass. When someone has this kind of attitude, there are always other tests. So now that we've spent a few minutes talking about what negging is, who does it, and why they do it, I want to share some real life examples of negging that I found on the Tinder subreddit. Here we go. You look really good considering you've had a kid. What? So are you saying that when a woman has a child, she immediately becomes ugly? Oh, wow. What a backhanded compliment. No, I meant like sometimes when a woman has a child, th their body can be a bit loose. Uh, face palm emoji. I think this person is lucky, that's all. <laughs> that's all they responded. So the next one is another almost textbook nagging example. Oh, so you're a tiny woman. How tall are you, Mighty Mouse? LMAO 51. Tell me you can't see that short energy from my pics. She's kind of playing along, which is something that I think a lot of us do, but it's not necessary. If somebody's insulting you off the bat and you don't know them, you owe them nothing and you do not have to respond. You can say, okay, thank you. Bye. I feel like that's a pretty appropriate response to negging, but it also depends on how hurtful the thing is that the person said. So this clearly didn't seem to hurt the other person. So she was kind of playing along and that's fine too, but it gets a little worse. All I see is a lame girl rocking a cute hairdo. Damn, you calling me lame? I wasn't calling you cool, but honestly, that's kind of rude of me. We should at least link up for a drink first and then maybe consider reevaluating my judgment. See, this is really the crux of negging and why it works. It, it kind of gets you feeling like you have something to prove. So if this were to work on this person, you know, maybe she would feel like she has to win him over, like she has to change his mind. And, it, you know, when you spell it out, it's, you could see how incredibly toxic that is and how, how incredibly dangerous it is. But when you're in the moment, you might not see it. And that's why I think that it's important to call things out like this and to talk about why we shouldn't care about other people's opinions so much. Your value is based on who you are, not what someone thinks of you. And if you ever have to change someone's mind, if anyone starts out with you in a deficit, walk away. And so those are the examples. There are a lot more where that came from, but I will leave it there for now. And if you want a part two, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any of your own nagging stories or examples, please feel free to share them. Like I said, this tactic is a red flag for sure. And it may be that the person who's using it is misguided, or they may be a raging abusive narcissist. And if they are, you can bet that they're setting the stage for things to get much much worse. And if you're dealing with a narcissist, you can bet negging won't be the only mind game you'll encounter with this person.
It may be the first, but it definitely won't be the last. To get a feel for what you might be in store for if you accept negging, watch this video right here. In that video, I talked through seven more mind games that narcissists use, and unfortunately they work because they work against the way we're wired. So as always, if you found this video helpful or valuable in some way, like, share, and subscribe. It helps the video and the channel. And I want to sincerely thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one.